Hello and welcome back to a short video on to answer actually a question I got from someone who's watched uh, some of the earlier entity framework videos I've done and that question was how do you access stored procedures and functions in entity framework 6 in SQL specifically uh, so I decided to do two short videos one on functions and one on stored procedures so we'll do the functions here first turns out it's really really easy uh, not quite as straightforward <laughs> as it could be uh, logically if you're new to it but not too hard either uh, I have the source code uh, you can leave a comment I'll send it to you I'm happy to uh, but it is the same source code we've used in the previous examples uh, the only thing I've done is I've gone into the customers database I've added a few customers and I've added some purchases we all know how to do that okay so the first things first is we add the function you can do that it's already here you see I've already got the function uh, I'll show you what it does it takes an integer it returns a decimal and it just averages the purchases for a given customers ID <laughs> so it's not even that complicated of a function but you do need to pay attention to the fact that it takes one integer as an input its name is average purchases and it returns the decimal specifically you can add the function if you're doing the database on your own you've been following these videos just right click on functions add new table valued function and away you go remember after you do that to go to SQL and execute it or you can use SQL management studio which is the way I still do things <laughs> okay so you'll see I'm still using the same project that we were using in the second first and second videos it's just got a Windows form I've added a new button called database function uh, we'll get into the code in a minute don't want to get too far into the weeds because we need to do what well since we changed our database we need to update our model so I'm going to show you how to do that it's really easy you're going to go to your EDMX file there's your two tables make sure like we did in uh, that error we found in video 2 this relationship here make sure it's cascaded and on the edit one on delete that it deletes its children so in order to update the model you can do it one of two ways you can either do it from here by right clicking and going update model from database which I'm gonna do now uh, you would have a new uh, and you would expand store procedure and functions DBO and you'd have a function uh, average purchases I since I already have it is listed here average purchases finish it'll update our model now notice it doesn't show here and I hate that that nowhere no list of functions nothing like that but you can actually right click and go down to there's a model browser and it'll bring up right here a model browser and you can see this customers model dot store right here I've highlighted it for you you can see all the tables and store procedures and functions constraints in your model and we can see average purchases here and it tells us the function name on the server and tells us uh, various other things I mean I don't, we're not going to get in here until we get store procedures and stuff but it tells us stuff about that function we can expand it and it tells us that a customer ID is an int which is by default a 32 so we can see it did import the the average purchases function so the model is now up to date and what do we do we save and we save often so we're going to save and now we're gonna go over once it saves it's smoking fast we're gonna go over to uh, our DB function button double click it there's two things we need three things we need to do actually to add support for our functions first thing we need to do is go up to our using statements and we need to include this line right here using system.data.entity.core.objects.dataclasses and we need to add that so that we can use uh, an EDM function uh, as an attribute on one of our functions later on which we're going to go over now which is this what we do is we declare a static function remember the type of the function in the database was decimal 
you must follow it with a question mark. If it returned a string, it would be a string. If it returned an int, you get the drill. And then a question mark. And then the name of the function. I always name this the same as the name of the function uh, in the model. And then inside the parentheses is the type of parameter that the function in the SQL Server actually takes. And if you look at the code, it's very bizarre. It throws an exception. You say, well, Dean, that's kind of stupid. Uh, this function doesn't do anything. Every time I call it, it's going to blow up, throw an exception. Well, no, it's not because of this. And this is why we included that using. What it's going to do is it's going to see this EDM function, and it's going to say, okay, I need to go to the customer models.store, look for an SQL function called average purchases, call that function, and send it the value that you've just put in here as your argument. Now, if you had multiple arguments, put them in order. So we can go again. Let me show you again, just to show you I'm not lying. Go to our browser, which comes up by default now customers model dot store store procedures and functions average purchases right there name of the store name of the function make sure public static return type question mark mandatory name of the function and list of parameters in order with the right values and the return type must match. So if we look at the code, how we do this, it's the same. It, this was so beautiful about the entity framework. One of the beauties of it is that we create the context, we create the query. Remember, we're not nothing happens here. We just create the query. You'll notice it's a little different from some queries we've done before. It's just a um, in this case it's a I queryable list of customer list it says from customer and context dot customers and this is new you haven't seen this in the video but we're just selecting a new object you can do this and say select a new object and it's got two properties the first property assigned to it the customer's name from customer dot customer name the second property called average call that function average purchases and send to it the ID value of the given row we're on's ID. Beautiful. Very simple, very straightforward, and it works like a champ. Now we do a buffer, the string builder. We're going to do a message box and show everyone's averages. And then we're going to go through each enter. Then this is when it actually hits the database and does the work. For each customer entry in the customer list, we show their name and show they make average purchases of how much. So let's see this work. We're going to call a function. Beautiful. There it is. There's our customers, and it tells us makes an average of, and it does a work for us. And remember, this function is running on the SQL Server, the average function. Absolutely amazing. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. So just a quick recap, what did we do? Created the function, updated our model, verified the update by right-clicking and going to Model Browser. Looked here, it came down. Went to our form code behind, added this using statement, just trust me on that. Always do it. Then we had to define the function as a static right here. Return type had to match. Question mark was required. Name of the function. Ordered list of the parameters. Matching types. Up here, EDM function. Name of the store, where they come from, which you can get from right here customersmodel.store tells you what the name of your store is and the name of the function create your context create your query and do something with it and you can take it around with this I mean we could have just pulled one we could have done something uh, you could have selected new uh, from customer and customers select new 
Uh, we could have done a wear. You could have done all kinds of stuff. Link here. Go ahead and feel free to play with it, tinker around with it, do whatever you want. See it run again. And then we'll be finished. Beautiful. No problems whatsoever. So hopefully this helps. This video will uh, get you down the road on functions in SQL and the entity framework. Specifically, we're running 6. 6.0.0.1, uh, I think, is what it actually is. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at deanbortel at gmail.com. Or you can just send me a message through the uh, Texas Lake House uh, channel. Please be sure to subscribe if you like the video. I try to put up one or two videos a week. Uh, code and all kinds of other stuff. So thanks for stopping by and hope you learned something.